Hello, and welcome to uh, the next uh, game you should play, Darkest Dungeon. Uh, I'm super excited to play this game. I've been playing this game a ton lately, um, so I'm excited to share it with you. So as you can tell, it is a spooky game that we've go <laughs> got going right here. Um, first, a disclaimer, this game is in early access. It's being released for full in January. Uh, so if you're one of those people, I haven't run into a single bug, and it's pretty feature complete as far as uh, I can tell. Um, but if you're one of those people that wants to wait till the very end, you absolutely can. Uh, you still got time. Um, but let's go ahead and check this game out, because this game has been consuming so much of my time. Let me check Steam actually real fast. I've already played uh, 31 hours of this game that costs 20 bucks. Uh, so that's a pretty good deal so far, and I am not even close to being done with it. Um, all right, so here's the premise of the game. You need to go explore dark dungeons. Uh, and you need to get fat loot out of them and bring it back up. Um, and how you do that is first, you're, you have this camp here. So this camp has a lot of different things here. So stagecoach, um, oh, I've already taken dudes. Um, new recruits come every day to join your cause. Uh, there's the tavern here where you can drag and drop people. Drink your cares away. Um, if I had the money, I could pay for it. <laughs> but I am broke right now. Um, and then there's stuff like over here at the guild hall use this to upgrade people's abilities um, and so let's get into the dudes over here so you collect um, adventurers right they're all there's a bunch of different classes you can see this guy's a leper yes that is a class we got the hellion the occultist the arbalist the crusader man-at-arms all sorts of cool stuff each one of these has a set of uh, what is a seven abilities uh, that you can choose from when they show up on your door, they only have four of them trained, and you can retrain them and earn different ones or use whatever they have. You can also, over time, upgrade their abilities. Um, you get their items. So let's check out, got our inventory stash here. So these are all the items I've collected. You can give two to each person. There are some, like this one is unique to this class. Um, so it does something special for him. But it's a lot of trade-offs, like, oh, 20% chance for your skills to move enemies, but you have less speed, which means you, you go more slowly, um, you take turns less often, that sort of stuff. Um, so without getting into too much detail, let's just jump into a dungeon so you can see, because this is really the meat of the game, these dungeons. Um, let's go ahead, let's do a dungeon that is short, which means we'll probably be able to get it done. Okay, so this one here, explore 90% of rooms, and we're going to take <laughs> uh, people that I have no attachment to. So if they die, that's okay, because it's permadeath. If these guys die, they're gone. Um, so let's see. So here you can see you you order your group in in order, in, in positions. Um, so here you can see from, there's you take four people. So this guy prefers the first two slots, which basically means he can use his abilities more. Because uh, each of the abilities, you can see the yellow dots is positions you can use it in. And then the red side is which positions on the enemy team it affects. Uh, so this guy really wants to be in the first two slots. What does the Hellion want? Hellion almost needs to be in the first slot. Because um, they have two abilities that can only be used there. So we're going to toss them to the first ability. That dude to the second. Uh, the Houndmaster, which is awesome, has the dog. Um, oh, he doesn't have the best ability. This Hound's Harry is so good. So this is the problem, right? This is where, it c where you have to start doing risk-reward. This dude is fresh off the boat. He could easily die in this dungeon. It costs 500 gold to train a new ability for him. Do I do that because I really like that ability? Or do I just send him in thinking he's probably going to die? We know the answer to that. He's not going to last. <laughs> um, all right, and this person really likes uh, three and four. Ooh, harvest is a great ability. I really want to be able to use that. Um, An inspiring tune is not great. Uh, you just do a little heal on somebody. Um, so I really want him to be in third, not fourth. Uh, it's fun here. Every now and then, I haven't figured out which combinations it is, but some combinations, um, they give you a little name, like the Indisposables or the Wrecking Ball. Like, that's the team comp name that you've chosen. It must just be whichever ones are popular. So before you go into a dungeon, remember, it's permadeath. So you want to invest in these people if you want to get something out of it. But you can also, don't think I'm a bad person, you can just send them in with nothing and grind them out. Make them pay in blood. And then they'll come back wretched, disposed, just destroyed, most of them dead, but they'll give you all the loot when they come back, so you make a huge profit. Um, but let's not do that, because I don't want you guys to hate me too much. We'll give them a few torches, 
Actually, we can't afford food and torches. Sorry, guys. We're only doing torches. <laughs> no food this expedition. Because uh, normally you want to give them a stack of food and a stack of torches. Because food, over time, they eat it and they gain health back and they avoid getting stressed out. But torches... Well, I'll, I'll show you what torches do. They're super cool. Um, and I guess that's one thing to point out about this game. Um, they do not explain everything up front. The swine, we must first scout their squalid homes. Do you hear that? So, I almost forgot to mention, the game has a really cool narrator that goes through and describes kind of what you're doing. And, like, when you do a big crit, he says something. Or when your dude panics out and dies, he says something. Oh, man. Such All right. Are so, see if I... These tunnels predate even the earliest settlers. It reminds me of, like, the Haunted Mansion narrator, if you've ridden that ride at Disneyland. So, you can see here, if I had a shovel, if I had bought a shovel, I could have put it in here and they would, um gotten through it real easily, but let's see what the narrator says after I force them to dig it out by hand. <laughs> Without tools of iron, you must rely on flesh and indefatigable purpose. Flesh and indefatigable purpose. So, alright. Here we go. Oh, phew! Alright, so, so you can see on the map you're exploring, you basically travel between rooms and each room has these five tiles, even though you don't really see the tiles as you're running through. Um, uh-oh. Bad news. Oh, no! So, alright, let's talk about... A lot of things just happened right here. Um, one, the torch goes down over time. So when I wasted a ton of time clearing that wall by hand, instead of using a shovel, the torch went way down. Which is the light in the dungeon, so it got really dark. Um, you can use torches to raise the light, so you can see the bar go up when I use it. Each one is 25. The match is struck. A blazing star is born. Thank you, narrator. Uh, commenting, let me know. Um, so, what happens, the general rule is, the more light, the easier it is, but the less rewards you get. The darker it is, the more rewards you get, but the harder it is. And one of the big ways they make it harder, which is unfortunate because it just happened to me, is teams can get surprised. And if you're the team that's surprised, it reshuffles all of your dudes. Remember how we were saying how, like, we meticulously chose where we put our people because that let them use abilities? Now none of them can use their abilities, and you have to waste time moving around. Uh, my Jester is actually super fast, so even though he can attack, I'm going to send him all the way to the back, because I need to get this man-at-arms back up front. Uh-oh. Alright. So let's see. So he's got Hound's Rush, like a single target, like a debuff attack, and a self-heal. None of these abilities are really good. Target Whistle and the self-heal are pretty bad, unless you're running a comp specifically for them. Um, but since he can attack the back line, which is actually pretty rare, I think he's the only person on my team that can. That might be a problem, now that I think about it. Oh no, dodge. I'm gonna need him to take care of the back line. Um, so it's turn-based. Oh no, I have Iron Swan on this one. Alright, cool. So, th she has a special ability. Not all of them have it. Um, you can train it, obviously. But, when she's in the very front, she can attack the very back. Continually that sweet unsought. Iron Swan attack. Destroy. Them. Destroy them all. <laughs> um, so let's see. So this dude needs to move one more spot forward. And now we're back in our ideal situation. So I just had to waste two turns to do it, which is going to be a lot of damage. Oh no! He wasn't supposed to go that far back, the Jester. Bummer. Alright. Let's go ahead and do a battle ballad. While I'm back here, I might as well buff everybody. Um, let's take down these spiders. Oh no! Getting an unlucky streak. Bellow, debuff the enemy team. This is no good. Normally I like my teams to either rely on a lot of stuns and heals. That combination is really good. So you can basically, you whittle their team down till there's only one person left. And then you just stun it over and over while you their heal up your own team. It's really broken. great. Um, or AoE attacks. Offensive. And this team doesn't really have either. So this could go poorly. Uh, these blights are going to start hurting. But that's alright. Looks like uh, this is going to be no problem. Let's give a wicked hack As onto that spider. This Hellion is earning her keep. She's killed, I think, like everybody on this team. Boom, there we go. So you can see, actually, there did notice the Jester moved up a spot. So a lot of abilities, you can see, it says forward one on it. A lot of the abilities will actually cause your people to move around. So the Jester, who's like a bard, um, has a finale move where you can only use it, I think, in the very back, and he slides on his knees all the way forward and then does a big power cord to the whole uh, enemy team. It's pretty cool. It Well, it'd be cool if it weren't a bad ability. <laughs> it's just a pretty bad ability. 
But there you go. We got through the battle. We earned a little keep. Uh, we earned a little money, but not nearly enough to pay for our expedition so far. So uh, these guys better start raking it in. Ah, another ambush! My wounds are mounting. It eats away at my flesh. That's alright. We'll get to see uh, <laughs> the really cool quirk system that they have in this game since uh, we're doing so poorly. Let's see. Do I want to... Yeah. Let's go ahead and slow them all down and reduce their chance to dodge. So this will make sure I get more turns in. One of the annoying things about this game, one of the very few annoying things, actually, is that, uh, resist the push. That could have been bad. Um, it doesn't tell you the turn order. Like, if I knew that my Houndmaster was next, I might make very different decisions than just right now when I have no idea, right? Um, Palmer, they're resisting all my big attacks. What's that all about? All right, so there we go. Houndmaster's going. So I'm still fiddling with the sound. I can't tell. Uh, so I want you guys to hear the narrator, but the combat effects are really loud. So hopefully this isn't awful. And if it is, sorry. Um, you can see we still have tons of daylight up. I don't have any abilities that raise the light on this uh, team comp, but there are like clerics and stuff that'll come in and they can raise the light with their abilities. Crusaders do that as well, which is really nice. Give them no quarter. Thank you, scary disembodied voice urging me to violence. Um, so here you can see. Okay, so here, there's a bunch of stuff scattered through the dungeons. They're all randomly generated each time. Um, but you can choose a party member to go check it out. So our Houndmaster is almost dead. I don't want to send him, but let's send the Jester. Ooh, who? So since I had that gold light, it means it's good. Oh, 500 gold. This expedition is paid for itself as long as someone lives to bring it back to me. But here. All that's left of a previous adventure. So you can do stuff like, oops. Um, you can drag items there uh, to try and use it. Kind of like an adventure game almost, which is kind of fun. Because there's some ways, sometimes to do that. Like you can burn books and certain things will happen. Or you can drop gold onto altars and see what happens, that sort of thing. Um, I haven't experimented with that too much. Because honestly, I just try opening it without anything else. Because I don't, I don't know what will happen. Because there's one... Where there was like a red, uh, looked like a flower stone altar. And it, it said something like, uh, putting light here or something could cause something to happen. Something gener vague like that. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll put a torch there. And it summoned like a Cthulhu god. Where it took up like this much of the screen, the entire enemy side except for one slot. So he was the size of three people. And it put the torch to zero and refused to let me raise it with new torches. And he just ate my entire team. It was awful. I think I damaged like 5% of his health uh, before everyone <laughs> was dead. So now I'm very hesitant to put torches onto things. Oh, don't. Um, so I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, there are traps like that. Sometimes if you've scouted out the area, you can actually see the trap ahead of time. Now, this is odd. There isn't much combat. This is making me nervous. Is it all like thrown at the very end? of? The okay, so cool. So now we're scouting. You have a chance every time you go into a room to basically scout ahead. Um, so you can kind of see, okay, so there's a loot thing, and then there's a surprise ambush. And over there's another wall, which is going to just drain through my health and light again, since I did not equip these guys with shovels. Oh! So did you see the little flash of faces above her uh, above her person? Characters can, like, develop quirks, is what they call them, which is kind of like disorders, almost. So some people have, like... Uh, I don't know, like obsessed with undead or undead bodies or obsessed with corpses and stuff like that. So sometimes they'll just do stuff that you don't want them to do or you don't ask them to do. So they're like that uh, Hellion, the lady, she just decided to open that pouch uh, because one of her quirks or something is always check for pouches or always open pouches, obsessed with dead bodies or whatever it was. Uh, and so she just did that without me asking. It could have been a disaster, right? She could have gotten a disease from it. She could have, could have just cut her open, all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's interesting because... Devastating blow. Ooh, devastating blow. Yeah, buddy. So that's the bleed on him, killing him right there. Um, it's interesting because even when you think you have control, suddenly they start doing stuff that you don't want them to, and you're just begging them to do what you ask. Like, you'll win. We'll win right now if you heal that other person. Um, but if they have suddenly become, some of them become like uh, masochistic or uh, 
what, what are some of the other ones? Uh, like, not angry, but some equivalent of angry. I can't think of the right word. Um, but actually, they might. They get it when they get stressed out. So here you have two resources. The red is health and the white is stress. And when they get mass stressed, stressed out, which will happen soon because when it gets dark it happens a lot, and I'm about to put out the torch <laughs> when I have to open this or tear down this wall manually. Um, man, that is unfortunate. Yeah, Injury the and is despondence set the stage for heroism or there you cowardice. Go. The narrator thinks we're setting the stage for heroism by Vicky at dark. So you can see here, so because it's dark, three times as much stress for people, twice as much, well, I don't know if that's twice, but doubly strong um, monster uh, damage and accuracy, so chance to hit, double the chance for heroes to surprise, but you get more loots and you crit more often, uh, which is interesting. So this looks like something dangerous to touch, a rack of blades. Well, let's see what happens. Oh, nope. Got a nasty gash, and now I'm bleeding. Bummer, so that's six damage, which is about 50% of her health right now. Uh, but I couldn't resist. I always open those things, especially since, as we said, these dudes are disposable. We don't care if they break down and have, you know, disorders. All right, so now you can see, because we scout ahead, we can see this trap on the ground. This little, uh, right there. You can barely see it. They make it really hidden. Um, Dresser has the most? Okay, whew. Because there's a chance that they trigger it as well. Uh-oh. I've gone to full darkness. And I have no more death. torches, right? Yeah. Oh, wait! Whew! Well, speak of the devil. Let's pop this bad boy out. Actually, we know we have combat in that last room, so let's save it for that. We're going to wander dark until then. And hope there's no combat here. Oh, no. This is bad. Please don't get surprised. Okay, not surprised. Ugh. These things are so gross. They can give you a disease every time they spit on you. Last time, uh, my dude got syphilis <laughs> uh, from getting spit on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use the tool. Oh, do I use the dog treats? Yeah, let's just try and win this fight. Because I don't think I'm going to be able to win two fights. So dog treats is cool. The Houndmaster gets... Every time they go into a dungeon, they get one dog treat. And they can use that and for that... Basically, that round. So three rounds. He's super powerful. Um, so which one of these do we need to kill? This dude's gonna do stress, which I actually kind of want to see, so I can show you guys the disorders. So let's just nuke down the damage dealers. Oh, I didn't plan that ahead, because this guy attacks the two middle ones. Um, so I should have attacked someone else with the master. Oh, look at that crit. Oh man, so low. Oh, and stunned! Oh no. Alright, let's go ahead and iron swan that syphilis face back there. Oh no! Oh, because the thing is so low um, that, uh, uh -oh. okay, what is the right choice here? I think I just want to hit them all. Oh, I was hoping for a crit on the last guy. Eek, and they resisted all my debuffs. Oh, look at that crit. Oh, man, this is going to be bad. Oh, yep, she just got bulimic <laughs> from that spit. Uh, you just get all sorts of, oh, no. Okay, so there, she just had a crisis. Fear and frailty finally claim their due. So that's super cool. So when you hit a hundred stress, you hit a crisis, and your your uh, adventure has a chance to either overcome that crisis, uh, that crisis, or basically succumb to it. So here she got she succumbed to it. So she got fearful. So this is a negative effect where she could basically cho choose to refuse orders. Um, like if I tell her to attack something big, she might be like, "No way, it'll kill me. I won't do it." That sort of thing. Um, aww. And uh, Fearful, um, I think she also starts spouting, like, anytime something bad happens, she starts saying, oh no, we're doomed, and then everyone else gets more stressed out, it kind of just snowballs. On the brink, facing the abyss. And that's the greatest joke of all. So he's on death's door. So every time you get reduced to zero health, you don't get killed immediately. More oh, blood there he goes. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Jester. Um, you get put into, uh, like a death state, or death's door, is what they call it. And you could be killed every time you get hit while you're at death's door, but it's not for sure. Well oh, there struck. we go. See that crit. Yeah, that's a proper flanking. Let's see if we can close this out. Maybe we can find some food on this table. That'd be awesome. Heal up a little bit. Oh, we victory. did it. We only had to get this far. Awesome. So I forgot our quest was only to explore 90% of rooms. 
Um, so let's go ahead and, well, let's continue adventuring. Because we want to check this table. Oh! Well, now she got a disease. So, <laughs> another one. So let's get out of here. So that was a dungeon, right? So that was a short dungeon. Medium dungeons. We'll do one of those next, so you can see. Uh, but short dungeons, it's supposed to be really fast, uh, with an easy objective that you can usually do with the newbies, which is what I did there. Fresh off the stagecoach. Um... Oh, I should have looked at that screen more because it showed you what happened to them. But we'll look at it out here. Um, so you can see it's cool. You get the activity log. Pale in comparison to that final crowning thing. What does that narrator say? I could not look, nor could I look away. <laughs> so the story is this dude basically owns this land, this cursed land, which is like a manor that opens up to this Cthulhu-like Lovecraftian horror underneath. Um, and he's gone mad, and so you'll see him running around town, and he's the one taking notes. Uh, but here, it tells you what happened. So, so-and-so, these guys leveled up because I took them into the dungeon. These guys that I had in the sanitarium to remove their quirks, those bad things, right? So this had, like, when he fought beasts, he got scared really fast. So I removed that. Here, this guy was just sickly, so he had disease resist. Uh, so I removed that. Um, so that's the sort of stuff that you pay to do. You put them in here. That's actually quite funny. Let's see if, uh, I bet we can find some to remove down on the D list. Deviant taste, not allowed to visit the brothel. <laughs> Guilty conscience. Paranormal, obsessed with paranormal. So that means if there's anything paranormal in the, in the dungeon that you run across, they will open it whether you want to or not. So this, one, this lady's just obsessed with everything. Don't need to remove that. Witness, don't need to remove that. Cophobia. All right, let's remove that. Um, cause he, he just gets stressed out when you go into Cove, which is one of the dungeons. So you remove it. Shackles? Really? <laughs> they all say really funny stuff when you throw them in there, um, in, into different places. Whoa, this lady, Besley Longs, has a ton of bad stuff. Will not play or basically get whipped for stress relief. Uh, fascinated with injury, wounds, and torture. I, I, I think that's bad. Oh, so there you go. Anemic. Bleed resist. Let's go ahead and remove that. Why the leather straps? <laughs> but you can also remove uh, diseases if they have them. So there, she has hysterical blindness. So let's definitely remove that. Let's try one, find one of the dude. So you can see I'm quickly spending all of the money that we just earned because we went into that uh, dungeon with no money. We came out with maybe like 4,000, 5,000, and we've already spent half of it just trying to heal these dudes that I've been adventuring with. Oh, am I actually finally... I gotten rid of all the diseases? What? I've never had a disease-free uh, team. <laughs> Way to go. Way to go, guys. All right, so let's see. I'll show you what you can do. I'm not going to do it because I'll show you what I'm going to do with these guys. But this is one. This was the Houndmaster in our dungeon, right? So we leveled up. So you could come in and we could be like, okay, let's go ahead and buy the, the strong ability. Let's upgrade his abilities so they get stronger. Um, upgrades small, cost a small amount, but they, they improve it slightly. You can also drag him over to the blacksmith. And you could upgrade his base stats, essentially. So his weapon and his armor. Um, I could also give him items. So down here, um, if we pulled the guy out, we could be like, uh, let's see. What's an item? Oh, here you go. Houndmaster only. Plus 30% scouting chance if Torch is up. And plus 20% trap to disarm. So that's a super utility guy to have in the run with you. Um, but sadly, we're going to get rid of this guy. But you can see here, he's already developed these <laughs> bad things. So... He's now a ruins foe because of the <laughs> bad experience we just had in there. Uh, but he's curious. He's obsessed with the acquisition of knowledge. Um, we're going to go ahead and dismiss Hero because it we're terrible done. people. So this person Turn is still fearful, right? This is the one. That's what the little flashing skulls around there is. Stress resist and... Oh, no. This is no good. See, Manic for money. They steal money from you. If you have them open a chest or something and there's gold in it, they keep it. And so, all right. So she's out. So I'm not going to pay to heal her to stop stealing money. It's not my job. And, and this is gate. why this game makes us terrible people. No more good to us. Uh, but you can see now, since I've done a dungeon run, there's more people in here. I can recruit them, and they basically this do another dungeon that adversity uh, But I want to show you guys um, one and the same. a medium dungeon. And hopefully not get any of my dudes killed, because I've spent a lot of money on all of these people. So let's find if we can find one that's not a boss fight. Um, like, kill one wise and had the... the uh, one wizened hag. The hag is just so powerful. Um, here, gather three grain sacks. We might be able to pull this off. So let's let's bring our A team. So you can see I've actually started naming all of mine so that I know. Oh no, I forgot. 
My level three dudes won't go on these runs because they think they're too good for it. Um, all right, so let's take our C team, which is probably as good as our A team, right? Because um, I'm setting them on a level one dungeon. So we have a couple level two guys and one level one gun. Level one guy. Um, we're going to spend a lot to provision these guys because it's a medium dungeon, which means you get to camp halfway through, which also means it's a crazy long dungeon. Uh, so we want a lot of food and a lot of torches and one shovel. All right. So we just spent 3,000 gold on this expedition just to get them out the door. So we need these guys to do well. Um, but this will be an actual team comp uh, so we can have a little fun running through it. And then you get to see, oh, did I do Warren's last time? Oh, I should have done a different dungeon type. So there's four different tile Even sets, the essentially. Beast will lay down when it so the Warrens eaten. are gross pig people. <laughs> That's what food. goes on um, here. I'm obsessed with clicking everything that I come across. Booyah! Oh! So these things that we're picking up, there are four currencies uh, on top of gold. There's crests, statues, deeds. It's all stuff to do with the guy's family who owns this house. And that's how you upgrade your camp. Um, you have to do several runs to earn enough currency just to make one small upgrade. And you have to upgrade each of those buildings many, many times. Um, so there's a lot, to, a lot that you can work into. Um, so let's see. I, the occultist is pretty cool. Oh no, you didn't get to see the effect since he missed because he's a loser. Uh, but he uses the, the dark magics, right, that you're fighting against. So like the weird ethereal tendrils come flapping down and attack. Um, and the jester is just, I, whoops, I was not paying attention. I used the wrong ability, but I'm going to kill that one dude. So I guess that's good. Um, because this group has a lot of AOE, so that's why what I want to be using each turn. Um, so this guy, the leper, is so cool. He has a low chance to hit, but if he does hit, it's super powerful. So he's going to use Intimidate, actually, since that guy's already going to die since I messed up. Let's just nuke the front guy. Boom! Instant kill. Leper is awesome. He's one of my favorite. Uh, he has a really cool lore that they give in the camping abilities, you'll see. Um, but Grape Shot Blast is so good. Hits the front crumbles. three people for solid damage. This Highwayman is a really good uh, dude to have. Um, but alright, let's just keep going ahead with the slice off. Oh my word. These guys are just wrecking. Yeah, so the biggest problem here, I may run out of torches. Um, but it looks like they are just absolutely destroying this place. Give them no quarter. Highwayman got a little injured, but I can heal him up next time. Let's check out the table. Uh-oh. Ooh, resist. Uh, you just have a chance to resist. I think you can build up stats with items and stuff like that. So you can see, actually, I put items on my dudes. So let's look at it. This guy deals 15% damage if in rank 1, but it's minus 3% chance to get virtues, which are those good quirks. Also has a little more protection. I gave up speed. More accuracy on range skills. More damage on raid skills. Excuse me. Um, and then the Jester has a lot of just funny... Uh, lucky dice and bloody dice. Uh, so dealing bleed damage, which this guy is all just stacking bleeds like crazy. So this is super useful. Um, and then accuracy and dodge more. And then the occultist. Um, oh, he's here to make sure we don't get su surprised. Uh, minus 25% chance. Oh, sweet. Remember how I said torches were going to be our problem? Well, now we got them. So each torch is 25. So you have to do this interesting line because... Oops. Well, that's unfortunate. Should have been paying attention. Um, when you get under 80, immediately you aren't at the highest light, and so it's bad. But if you do it right at 80, you're going to waste 5 light because you get 25 from the torches and you cap out at 100. So you have to do this interesting balance of, do I let it go a little farther and hope I don't get ambushed in the next tile? Or do I immediately light another torch? Um, I, it's usually best, I think, to hope. Oh, sweet, so he just killed two of them. That dude is incredible. Um, and since we have a ton of damage, and I'm not worried about this, I'm going to start healing. But the occultist is an interesting heal. It heals 0 to 14 health, which is a huge number, but it's going to make him bleed for 6 damage. Um, uh-oh, 4. Oh, phew, there you go. See, the players have a chance to resist the bleed, so every now and then, um, there's no downside to doing that, which is awesome. Let's just go ahead. Oh, no! I was so sure that I was in, uh... Oh, no, nice. Marked and stunned. All right, it's time to start nuking these dudes. Get on As it, leper. Falls, Get out there. A faint hope blossoms. Fateful blossoms. Thank you. Oh yeah, look at that bleed nuking them. 
So a lot of dudes leave corpses behind, which actually can be very problematic. Boom, look at that crit. Strike. That's a creepy laugh. Um, corpses can be problematic because sometimes, like, you don't have abilities that can hit the back line. Whew. Should we get this room? Do we think we're going to need it? We probably should just go to it while we're here because it's so far away if we need to come back to it. Um, but a lot of times... Oh, sweet. Another shovel and a key. Oh, man. This is going to be a good run. I'm feeling it like we're getting a lot of stuff up front unless our luck changes horribly. Okay, good. I'm glad we came over. Treasure chest. Oh, and we surprised the enemy. Enemy doesn't get shuffled around when they get surprised, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but all of your dudes automatically get to go first, which in this group, which is all about big AoE damage, you basically just kill their whole team before they get a turn. Um, but actually, let's go ahead and focus on healing. There you go. Crits eight. Look at that. Any resist the bleed again. Yeah. Um, so now we got a double attack. Boom. So that combat worked out amazing because I got a free turn to heal, Success. which you can't so use clearly. outside of combat. Um, and I didn't take any damage since we surprised them. So here, you can try and open a chest without a key, but it has a chance to be trapped. Um, oh. Apparently the key doesn't even always work. That was unfortunate. Alright. So there's a bunch of stuff down there. Like, one of the quest items could be down there. I'm going to hope that it's not, because we just can't afford that much backtracking. We're not doing it. You can't make us. Because you can't, like, walk down a line, grab what you want, and then backtrack and go out the door you came in. You have to go all the way to the other room, um, and then go all the way back again. Um, so that would have been a really big backtrack. So that's okay. So even if we don't complete our quest, I no just getting through most of this dungeon will be able to earn enough money uh, to pay for it. And then hopefully pay for all the mental illnesses and diseases that these guys pick up along the way. Oh, I should definitely be lighting more torches. Distre oh. oh, wow. Alright, so I got an insanely lucky dice roll there. Because um, stress could actually be another big problem in this dungeon if I let it go on too long. The way is lit. The if I let the light clear. stay too low for too we long. Require only the strength to follow um, and this one, I'm not worried about healing. I'm going to make sure we nuke these guys because this is going to be a bad group. Um, this is a really powerful set of uh, monsters, so I do not want them alive. There we go. Boom! So we get one vomit from that gross pig man. It's so gross. Oh, he got spotted fever. Come on. So that's that's another thousand gold I gotta send that guy to the infirmary when we get back or to the medical ward. But at least now we have a disease to cure. We didn't have one last time. Don't give that guy a disease. It just stresses them out. Cause like, is that dude spitting on me? This guy's a freak. Um, so I can't actually... So this guy's going to die next turn anyways because of the bleed. And I can't get to the back line. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a stress heal on myself. And give myself protection. So he resists 32% of damage now. It's a really strong ability. All I need to do is land a pistol shot. Boom. So now the next time that guy goes, just like that, he's dead. We win. Oh, what? Pocket a thousand gold? That was a good fight. Well worth it. Man. So many fights all over the place. These guys are super weak enemies, though. They should have no problem just killing them all. Yeah. So he just killed um, those two. Let's go ahead and spend the turn here. Oh, no. A one. Come on. Oh, and he got the six dot bleed. Eek. Um, so I'm actually not going to shoot the front guy. Or attack the front guy. Because I want this fight to last. Um, because I want to get another heal turn on that Joker. Before... Uh, or he just gets wrecked by this dot. So I'm going to let that first one sit around and attack me a couple times. All right, come on. Big heal, no big. Oh, that's not a big heal. Oh, but he resisted the bleed. Cute. All right. That's good enough. Let's just end this. Um, uh, that's as far as I'm willing to risk it, because that dot stacks. So, if, so that uh, was a two damage per, for three rounds, beaten. right? If I had accidentally, like, say it was down to two damage for one round, and I stack the dot on again, it would suddenly go to four damage for six rounds. <laughs> it just gets crazy. Or four damage for three rounds. It just escalates out of control. So you just have to be very careful with him as your healer. But I like it. It's, it's a fun kind of additional kind of mini game stress going on. Keeps it interesting. More interesting than a cleric for me, which is just straight up heal dudes. Boring. All right, so we're, we've still got a ton of supplies. 
I mean, we're ambushing everybody. Aw, oh, drums of debilitation. Curse you! So, alright, that's alright. We got tons of AoE. We're just gonna go ahead and burn through these dudes. And that was kind of the most fun early on, was figuring out which combinations of dudes I wanted. Once I was actually ready to start investing in people, not just throw them away every time. Um, oh, look at that, 10 point heal. Uh, I took the bleed, but that's fine. Still four, four points of healing on it. Um, it's really fun trying out different combinations and seeing what works well. So that dude has one hit point on his next turn. So let's just go ahead. So I'm pretty happy with the health we're at right now, and I don't want to risk uh, him getting a lucky crit on my mount, or something. So too will resistance. Right, so going on my my inventory is full down here too. Actually, I I may have brought too many things. Um, so if we get new loot, we won't we won't be able to pick it up until we use another torch. Ah, look at that trap! Oh, but we dodged it. Highwayman, too good. This looks healthy, right? Decapitated heads on top of a barrel. Delicious. It was stashing treasures. Dude, this is this dungeon run. It's going really well. This is awesome. I'm glad we're watching this one because I don't always get very good luck whenever I'm streaming something like this. Um, so I'm glad that we're doing this. Okay, cool. Perfect time to scout too. So it's going to show us all of these rooms. All right. So how do we want to do this? Do we want the fight? So we, we can avoid the fight. We can go down and around. Let's do that. So we'll we'll do a loop. Let's go ahead and grab some books. Because we got tons of stuff to spare. Uh-oh. He's getting stressed out because he read a most unsettling passage. We are actually starting to get a little light on torches. Oops! Oh, and we saw the trap, too. It was on there. But I, I was so distracted. But they, they do a pretty good job of hiding the traps in there where if you're not active... Oh, another scout? They, this this luck is awesome. I'm going to use a live stream all right, runs. Alright, so I'm down below 75 again. Let's light another torch. And you can see, actually, you can shift click to reduce it or shift control click to just snuff it out entirely. So if you're like, I'm sick of this baby difficulty level. Bring on the hard. Um, you can definitely do that. Whoa. That actually... that Reading that one book because of how unsettling it was, lowered the light like 30 points, which is bad. Yeah, we're light, down to The promise four. of safety. All right, we got this. We're gonna do one more fight and then we're, we'll camp. Um, oh, cool, so this pops up seemingly at random. I can't figure out, because sometimes it happens like third tile in, sometimes this late, um, but they're hungry. And if you don't have food, your only choice is this, which is take 20% damage and tons of stress. Uh, to all of your dudes, but here since we have food, booyah, they all eat food and they gain a little health, uh, which is awesome. So that's usually why you bring food, because you can use them like out of combat health pots as well. But the biggest deal is just, if you don't have food when that thing pops, your dudes stress out. Let's go ahead and, should we just camp right here? No, we'll do one, we'll go do the fight, and then we'll do it, and then we'll camp at the ne next spot. So camping is pretty fun. Pack has already been looted. Yeah, because we've had great luck. So, this game is hard. <laughs> It's usually much harder than this. Um, Alright, so we're back down to 71. We're almost out of torches. Let's use one now. Just to make sure we don't run into any problems. Now, because I feel like I've been jinxing us by saying how good luck we're having. See, some of these dudes are just really gross looking. Uh, let's go ahead and start healing. Right. Oh, that was bad. Oh, but he resisted the bleed. It's okay. Crazy drum man trying to stress me out. Won't work. Go ahead, grape shot. Oh yeah, take that gross hook man in the back. Oh, now that guy's gonna die from bleeds too. The drum dude. Uh, so now we gotta worry about is pig crawler. Oh, leper! Look at that. Not even a crit. 20, 18 points of damage. That would just instantly kill anybody. That was awesome. So that's why I really like the leper. The leper is hard early on um, because he, his, his accurate. Oh no. Success. What do I want to take? Uh, I feel like I don't want these things. I'm just going to leave them. All right. Now we camp. Well, assuming there's no one here to ambush us. Let's find out. No, nope, we're going to camp. So on medium and long dungeons, you get firewood. And anytime you're in a room, you can make a camp. So your dude set up a camp, and you decide how much you're going to eat at camp. Vulnerable. And since we brought tons of food and we haven't needed any of it, 
Let's feast. So everyone heals up, restores stress. That's what the little white thing means. Um, but here you can see different abilities. So champions have combat abilities and camping abilities. And camping abilities you have to upgrade somewhere else. I haven't actually done any upgrading. Um, so I don't know if you can have more than this or you can upgrade them or what. Um, but you have 12 times in time increments. So let's say 12 minutes. For 12 hours. It's a long camp. You have 12 hours, and each ability costs a different amount of time, and that's the only thing you're paying to do it. Um, but this is really cool, because this is where you get to see kind of the lore side of things. Um, so, the leper uh, ability, quarantine. He can heal himself. Oh no, he hurts himself, but it reduces the stress of everyone else, because he's a leper, right? So he's like, I'll go off into the corner, I'll sit here cold, alone, and get more sick and weak, but everyone else feels more comfortable, because the leper's not hanging out their camp. Uh, reflection, so he can think about things that are going on, and encourage. So he, he's seen a lot of stuff. Um, he also has ability, not here, but let down the mask. Uh, so that's kind of what he's doing in the picture there, but it lets down the mask. And it's a big stress relief for him, but it freaks everyone else out <laughs> in your party. But if he has a ton of stress and no one else does, it can be a really good ability choice to do. Um, so here you can see uncatchable. So uh, improves scouting chance until the next camp. Uh, by 30%. So since we're only camping once, this would be for the rest of the dungeon. That's a pretty good ability for only two time cost. Uh, Gallows Humor. <laughs> he can reduce stress for himself. But for everyone else, has a 75% chance to reduce their stress too. Haha, <laughs> Dark Humor, that's really funny. But 25% of the time, whoa, you crossed the line, buddy. Jokes about decapitation are not very funny, and now you're freaking me out. Um, and then the Jester over here, Mockery. Um, he can mock one person basically so that increases their stress to reduce everyone else's stress um, or tiger's eye he can give them accuracy and stress resist so he helps them out or pep talk really help out one uh, another player and then awesome the occultist can wound care so he can heal and has a chance to remove bleeding so definitely want to do that because our stress is super low so healing is good he can abandon hope <laughs> which uh, reduces his stress but increases everyone else because he's like the world is going to end. We must use these weird space demons or whatever it is that he summons. And then everyone gets freaked out. And there, unspeakable communes. So there you go. He can only use it for himself, but it'll heal 30% and give him speed, which is huge. Um, so I think we just want combat stats at this point. Um, so accuracy, definitely toss that onto the leper. Because the leper's one weakness is, um, is accuracy. Uh, let's improve scouting chance. Just to make sure. When we move forward, I'll scout ahead a bit. Nothing to worry about. And then this dude, let's uh, get some accuracy for him. So our leper is going to be a beast. There are some abilities that are super cool where it's like prepare for the hunt or something. It's like uh, they get tons of bonus damage and tons of stats if they fight something giant next turn. And so like you can camp right before a big fight. Get them all pepped up and ready to go. And then just uh, go to town. Uh, so it looks like we have... Uh, a little more, so let's just go ahead and heal up. So everyone's basically at full health, boosted stats, and this is where it gets tricky. You rest, you hear how everyone's thinking, okay, we are the flame, th alright, everyone thinks we're the bomb, can anyone carry a tune? A um, match is phew. struck, a blazing star is born. Um, thank you, narrator. Every time you camp, there's a chance that you get ambushed while you're sleeping. <laughs> And suddenly you, they do the ambush thing where your whole team gets shuffled around and you have to fight. Man, this dungeon run is going awesome. We just got a grain of sack. Oh, wait. We were supposed to get three of those and we've only gotten one? Where are these things hiding? Okay, so this is interesting. So this dungeon isn't actually done when we go to this last group, which I thought. Are um, so here, clear the these shovel. Even the oh, man, so the torches settlers. are actually definitely going to become a problem. I should not have camped yet. I was not thinking. Oh, there it is. Swipe. All right, so there's one more grain of sack or sack of grains somewhere. We've gone to every room, but you can see there's one box there, one box there, and two over there. Is it in that room that we left? Let's see if it's down here. Um, Cause that'd be awesome if it was. It is not, and now we have to fight. But well, look at all that loot, and this should be our last fight, actually. Surprise the bad guys! Oh yeah. Let's nuke him down. Let's go. Do we want to pull? No, I think we just want to. So those are the creepy, like, demon tentacle things he's got going on. Go ahead, Jester. Do your thing. Draw a bleeding highway man. Blow him up. 
Then Leper, nuke the front guy. Come on, another 20 point hit or whatever it was. Oh, 10? Leper. You call yourself a leper. More like a lamer. Oh, got him. All right, let's go ahead and stab this dude in the face. Oh, let's slice, oops, can't slice. So, that guy, so he, I wanted to use this ability, but he can only use it on the middle two. So let's go ahead and Dirk stab, which is gonna move him forward one, which could be bad if he doesn't kill him, but he does, awesome. So otherwise, all my dudes will get put out of position, and then it's trouble. Push on to the tasks so now the question for you guys, who are hypothetically screaming at your monitor while watching this. I guess we're going to have to go try this box, and if it's not here, we have to go all the way back to the start. Uh, which could get bad, because I, I haven't quite figured it out, but I think... Um, Alright, so there's a trap right here. Booyah, disarmed. Um, come on, be the bag, be the bag, be the bag, be the bag, be the bag. Oh, you're not the bag. This is really bad. I should not have clicked that because there was nothing good going to come from it. And now he's he's got some sort of disease. He doesn't even want to tell me about it. So now we have to walk all the way back over there. Remember at the very beginning of this dungeon when I was like, should we do this? No, we probably won't need him. We, we, we shouldn't do it. We don't need him. Oh, man. I'm glad we brought food because these dudes are going to get hungry trekking all the way back. I'm tempted to just leave the dungeon, because if these guys run into problems, I'm going to have to pay a ton of money to heal them back up, but it'll give us a chance to keep talking. What? Yeah. So that's what I was going to say. I didn't know they put traps back in, but I know you can get ambushed again in places you've already walked before um, if you go back there. So even though the first time you went through there wasn't an ambush, if you walk back through there, the game will repopulate it with stuff. So there, it repopulated it with a trap as well. Um... Oh man, this is bad. Why didn't I buy more torches? Because we couldn't afford it. All right, we're gonna save the torch until we get into a fight. Um, Cause I don't want to be fighting in pitch blackness, but I'll walk through pitch blackness. It'll stress him out, but it's all right. We'll take him back to town. You send him to the tavern, you send him to the prayer hall, you send him to the brothel. You do what you need to, to get your guys happy. Um, again, and unstressed out. Um, Cause Jester dude is gonna snap at some point. <laughs> If it stays this dark. Alright, this actually isn't so bad. We haven't run into any new ambushes. Uh, the luck is with us today. Because we only have two more walks to get down to where... Alright, we're still doing good. Until where those, uh, those final chests are. Which should be, in theory, where the medicine bags are. Unless I totally messed up somewhere along the way. So let's see. Hey, this Secrets is going good. Yeah, because I've gotten ambushed several times. Corners of this so now we're going way back to the very start of the dungeon. Should we open this? Yeah, we should. Aw, oh, yeah. Money, money, money. So we've already... Oops, that was a trap. And I saw it. But... Curious I, is the it. trap maker's And there we go. His efficacy unwitnessed by his own eyes. Oh, I have to ditch something from my inventory. So what is worth the least amount that is not a grain... Oh, let's go ahead and use that torch. Whew! All right, so let's go back to town. Um, and then, so this, that's the last run we'll do, but I'll do a quick show you what we need to do to get our guys back in fighting shape. How much? All right, so the quest earned us almost 5,000 gold, a couple portraits, heavy boots. Uh, we got 7,000 in loot from stuff that we acquired or stuff we didn't uh, use. You, they buy it back for a small amount. And then these are the heirlooms are we used to upgrade your town, so we didn't get many. Because at this point, I need like 30 of each of those. Uh, so, Alright, so they got Resolve XP, which is basically leveling up XP. So do, Garen hit 3, Seduce hit 3, Shaco is still level 2. Uh oh, Shaco is now curious. <laughs> He's obsessed with the acquisition of knowledge. And Seduce is now a natural swinger. Um, so he gets accuracy. And so the symbol next to it shows you what it replaces. Because they can only have a max number of good or bad habits. Um, so it replaced unyielding. That's fine, I'd rather be accurate than unyielding. And then let's, uh, ooh, unless that accuracy Once helps us bleed. Our state was the heals, envy of this bad. land. So here you go. See, the dudes we were healing last time, boom, they, they healed while we, while we were gone. So that's super helpful. Um, let's check out our dudes. Garen doesn't need, Shaco needs something to relieve his stress. So let's see if he has a perk that helps him, like Nymphomania is one where you get more stress relief from the brothel. Or there's some, like, prayer warriors or whatever, you get more, uh, stress uh, relief 
Um, and there's not, and he doesn't have any quirk that prevent him from uh, relieving stress anywhere. So let's head down here. So you can see I wanted to find the caretaker. The caretaker is doing one of the things at all times. So times, sometimes you have guys that will only gamble to stress relief. And you show up and the caretaker, caretaker is already doing all of it. And you're like, ah, oh, man. Um, so you can upgrade the tavern, right? You Actually, it's super cheap to upgrade your tavern. Oh, man, maybe I should do that. But you have to upgrade each one of these individually, and I don't know which one is best or which one I should upgrade. So I just haven't gotten around to that yet. But you can eventually unlock more doors so you can send more people in there um, to do it. Um, let's let's send Shaco. He seems like a religious dude. Let's send him to the penance hall because uh, he usually says funny things. So flagellation is whipping. It's basically like in medieval ages or something, they believe like if you got whipped, it'd like beat the sins out of you. So there you go. Only through blood will I know absolution. <laughs> so he goes in there. Somehow that's going to stress, de-stress him out. God-fearing. In town will only pray. Oh, good. Well, that works out great that I didn't send Shaco to pray. The light is the one true power. So he's in there doing his thing. So those guys... Oh, and actually... Who got the diseases? Was it Garen? Yeah, so... Yeah, so... Garen got spotted fever. So let's go over to the sanitarium. Pay them. So you'll spend a lot of time doing this sort of stuff. And it really sucks down your resources really fast. Um, you can upgrade them as well here. So I upgraded my treatment just to reduce the cost. Because um, I've been doing a lot of it. But I haven't upgraded, you know, how many people you can put in there very much. Let's see, actually. So the first thing I did was upgrade the guild. Uh, which is what lets you... I'm at 100% now. lets you upgrade their abilities. Um, I, oh, I sent them... I should have trained them before they went off. Um, but I... Okay, cool. I haven't upgraded this guy. So but since I know this guy's a keeper, I want to upgrade his abilities. Um... And so these are the four that I've been using. Um, so I pay that. So that's another, you know, thousand gold down the drain. And the next one is like a thousand gold each. So I'm going to have to pay a ton of money to upgrade those other guys. So you can kind of see where at least, even if you don't agree with my philosophy of using and destroying the newbies to just to earn money, um, you can see where the philosophy comes from. Because to keep, just to keep your A-listers, like your strong people you want to invest in, just to keep them happy and healthy and functioning you have to earn money somewhere else because it's just so expensive. Um, let's see. I need 58 of these to upgrade. Um, and that's... So there's been a couple frustrating things with the game. Since we're having so much fun, I'll, I'll end on a couple frustrating things. It's not very clear, like, how to get the things you want. Like, I know I need these deeds. And one of, one of the buildings says they give you deeds. But then you run it and you get nothing but, like, crests. And so, I just don't understand how that works. Um, so I'm spending a lot of time essentially grinding through dungeons, trying to upgrade my town for this stuff. Uh, which is cool, because it feels really fun when you get to upgrade and your dudes get really more powerful. Uh, but it can be frustrating at times when you don't know exactly what you should be doing. Uh, but yeah, that's Darkest Dungeon. It's a whole lot of fun. Um, there's just so many things to learn and do while you're, while you're playing. Uh, it's just been a... A whole lot of fun. I, I don't always enjoy games that are a lot of trial and error and figure it out yourself. Uh, but this is a case where you don't. The punishment isn't very hard if you lose. Because even though you're losing dudes, I just made sure at the recommendation of one of my friends, Darren, uh, to upgrade my uh, stagecoach network immediately as soon as you start playing, uh, to the point where you get four new people a day, and that's all you need to fill out a squad. So no matter what, you can always fill out a squad um, so that you can't break your game. Um, and then other than that. You just kind of keep trying, you learn new things, you upgrade, you figure out which abilities you like, which abilities you don't like. Um, it's a whole lot of fun. So this game's on Steam. Uh, you can find out more on GameDiplomat.com. I'll have a full, a full write-up about this game up there soon. Um, so thank you guys for watching, and I hope you, I hope you enjoy Darkest Dungeon. Talk to you soon.